I'm going to tell a few stories about living dangerous dreams and hopefully surviving them. And I'm going to start off talking about my parents. That probably looks like child abuse to some of you, and it's not far off. <laughs> the kid with the really bad haircut, that's five-year-old me, and obviously not much has changed here. My dad's like 15, and I remember a couple things from this picture when we were out there. First of all, I remember being really scared because if you fell down there, it was quite obvious that you were going to die. And I was like, Dad, this is bad. And he was like, no, son, it's fine, and went off on some long discourse. The main thing he said is, you've got a rope on, and if you fall off, you're not going to die. And that was my first kind of hazard recognition lesson in life, and I didn't die. And the second feeling that I remember from this slide is getting to the top of this thing and being so stoked because I was like, wow, I'm alive, and I climbed something. This is the best thing ever, and this is what I want to do, like, forever. And I was totally fired up by it. And now what I do for 200 days a year is travel all over the world and have adventures of one kind, either as a guide or a filmmaker or a photographer sometimes, play a lot of different roles, but get outside and have fun. That's what I like to do. And this is a quick video from a recent episode of Having Fun. Be safe. Uh -oh. That was a realization of a big dream. I spent a lot of time flying out and convincing everybody from the governor of New York on down to the local parks department that I could do this safely. And the safety plan was like that thick. It was crazy. And eventually got it all together, got permission, climbed Niagara Falls, really cool. And I love doing stuff like that. But I, I just want to kind of go to the dark side of here and have a look at some of the um, kind of issues out there in my sport. I don't want to gloss over this. My sports are lethal. If you do things wrong, and I, as leader of these trips, do things wrong, people die. These are good, smart, switched on, fast, intelligent people. I am not better than any of them, and I'm playing the same game. And as I get older, I really like playing this game, and I want to keep doing it. It's beautiful, it's magic when it goes well, and it's horrible when it goes bad. So I put more and more time into trying to understand what I've done right, what I've done wrong, and learn from it, and come up with a few simple things that I can share. As I go through all of this, it's not the systems that have led to problems. You know, ropes don't generally break. It's not that stuff. There's no manual on how to do this. When I've gotten into trouble, it's usually because my attitude hasn't been in the right place, and my approach hasn't been in the right place. And now I've got an extra incentive to get it right. <laughs> OK? Yeah, she's just like me. You can see she's fired up. Daddy, hang me again, you know? <laughs> so I've got to deal with this, and I've got to switch them on to a way of dealing with the world so that they make it through. I don't know how I survived. I'd like them to, and they're kind of the same as me. They're ADAD and all the rest of it, you know? It's, it's going to be an adventure for them. So I've come up with three kind of simple tools that I, I want to work with and, and do my guiding with, and my business with, everything I do. The first one is hazard recognition. If you don't know what the hazards are, then you can't avoid them. And this is a way I look at the world. It's like, all right, what's going to go wrong here? How am I going to deal with it when it does? And I'm running this program all the time. We all are, whether we realize it or not. And how good is it? So if my kids, as an example of this, what I do is talk to them about it. You know, they're out there. I mean, the, mo the most that's going to happen here is probably sunburn, right? But when we're in situations like this, I talk to my kids about it. I'm like, all right, what hazard level are we running here right now? What's, what's going to go wrong? And my kids look at me, and they look around, and maybe we're hiking along a trail in the mountains, and there's nothing going on, and they're like, 
Mm, bumps and bruises, Dad. We got this. Cool. Then we're out there, and the trail's a little bit more radical, big drop off. And I'm like, all right, what would happen if you fell off there? Is that the main danger? They look at it, and they're like, well, we'll stay on this side of the trail. But yeah, Dad, if we fell off of there, we're at hospital for sure. <laughs> so the next level, of course, is we're standing on a street corner in Toronto or New York, and there's cars going everywhere, and this is hazardous. I don't know how children live in cities. Like, I'm amazed they even make it through. But I'm like, all right. Obviously, this is bad, kids, so how are we going to deal with this? And like, we're going to stay back. And I'm like, what would happen if you ran out there? Death, Dad. <laughs> right on. We got this figured out. I know that if I lose sight of them, which I'm going to do, you know, they're, they're like me. They're like over there, over there. They're, 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 they move. I know they've got the skills to navigate that environment. And that's what I'm trying to impart and live by myself, that hazard recognition, understanding that life is dangerous, and being aware of it and tuned into it. Now, some of you are probably going, he's really negative, but I kind of think you're not being very positive. <laughs> There's this thing right now, the positive power of positive thinking, just happy thoughts and it's all going to be good, right? And the universe loves you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> probably doesn't really care about you very much. <laughs> so what I'm into is the positive power of negative thinking. And I hope that as my kids get older, they're also looking at it the same way. You know, maybe my daughter is 15, and, and I know what I was doing at 15. And there's a bunch of drinking, and there's a car going somewhere. And I hope she looks at that, adds up the danger, and goes, death, and gets it. It's not negative. It's about making good decisions in life and thinking things through. This has saved me over and over again. In this photo here, I'm 16. I'm positive. I got this. I'm going to run this. And then I'm also looking over on the side. There's ice there. What if you got pushed underneath the ice in your kayak? Like, what would you do? And I was thinking about this, and I paddled off. I got this. I'm 15. I was really positive at age 15. Paddle off this thing, current stronger. Next thing you know, I'm under the ice. And it's dark, and there's no air. This is not going well. But I've been thinking, what would, what would I do in this situation? And I was like, well, I'd, I'd swim for the light. So I got out of my kayak, and I got up underneath the, the ice. And I went along it, and the air bubbles, I still remember this, were too, too thin to suck on. I tried that out. And I just kept moving toward the light, and I popped up, and all my friends were like, no way, you lived. <laughs> so that's what I mean by the positive power of, the, of negative thinking. It's like, have a plan, and even for when things are going sideways, and it leads you more towards success. The next one I use a lot is anticipating and expecting change. This is, this is abnormal. You're all sitting there nicely, but things change all the time. When I'm out in the mountains guiding, my client may be like, we're getting to the summit. And I'm like, this isn't a bad Everest movie. We're also going to get down. You know, <laughs> we're going to make it down today. And then maybe the weather starts getting better. And I've won a lot of competitions and stood on a lot of summits by myself because I also recognized that things were improving. So change is both negative and positive. It depends how you look at it and the fact that you embrace it and pull it toward you, and what you do with that. Now, the next thing that I'm into thinking about and sharing as I do all these high-risk things, I learned from a very famous Eastern Zen Buddhist philosopher named Clint Eastwood. <laughs> There's this scene in a movie that's really struck with me, and he looks out and he goes, a man's got to know his own limitations. And what he meant by that is that you got to know when you're operating in an area where you're competent and in an area where you're not. YouTube is full of people. You had a very high level of confidence. I can do it. My mom said so. I'm going for it. And a very low level of competence. <laughs> right? This is what the fail reels on YouTube are full of. <laughs> and I don't want to be that guy very often. I'm going to make it occasionally, but I, I want to avoid that. So, I always think, do I actually know what I'm doing? It's a really relevant question. And if not, I bring people in who do. A few years ago, I had this great idea that I was going to go climb icebergs. And this sounded rad. You know, here in the Rockies, icebergs. I'm really good at climbing ice. I actually know something about that. I've been doing it my whole life. Right on. And I showed up there, icebergs, I know what to do with these. But there's an ocean. I knew nothing about that. I had this idea that that if the iceberg started rolling, the boat would come in, and I'd like nimbly leap onto the bow. <laughs> and 
<laughs> it isn't like that. When those things roll, big chunks come flying off, and the boat heads the other direction. You are on your own. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, that's not going to work. And uh, I just recognized I was way outside my league and got some great pictures. The return on investment was great for sponsors and stuff, but I ran away. And that decision is what allowed me to climb Niagara Falls 20-some years later. Which you've got to recognize when things just aren't working out and, and get out or get more competent somehow. So if you put these three things together, there's pluses and minuses in all of them, but what they really are is kind of an arsenal to defeat fear. Because the other great philosopher, Frank Herbert, who wrote the series Dune, he had this line, fear is the mind killer. It's what takes you down, destroys your dreams, stops you cold from functioning effectively, and it's no good. So what I often see is people saying, oh, conquer your fear. This does not work. <laughs> I've, I've tried a lot. It doesn't. But if you use these tools and dig into it, it's like, right, what's going to go wrong, and what's my plan if it does? Is it still worth it? Yes, no. What's happening? Are things changing? Better, worse? Do I know how to deal with that? Yes, no. And you chip away at it. Am I any good at it? I hear Clint Eastwood's voice all the time. Once I've done all that work, then, and I've pushed into that fear, I've leaned into it, and given it a shoulder, and we've wrestled a bit and felt each other around, then we can dance. We can go out and do something cool and go out and do these amazing things. My little daughter the other day was on a trail, and it was pretty steep on one side. She'd already identified that this was hospital terrain, but we got into a section where there were bushes all over it, but it was kind of steeper and scarier. And she stopped, and she was quite scared. And it was only after we realized that those bushes would stop her from rolling that all of a sudden her eyes lit up, and she's like, ha, I'm safe. You know, I can build my teddy bear forts and do stuff here. And that's what I'm looking for in my own life. Not ignoring danger, not pretending it doesn't exist, but looking into it, leaning into it, coming up with plans, and executing really cool stuff without getting killed. Because this is a pretty rad life, you know? We're, we're lucky to be alive. We're in a safe place, you know, relatively speaking. We have endless opportunity, and it is awesome. And I might be crazy, but I'm not crazy enough to approach all this stuff in life without some kind of plan. So as you drive home today, check things out, look at your own kids playing. Maybe some of this will resonate with you, and you'll be like, ha, bumps and bruises, or I got it. I'm going to lean into the fear, work through it, go out and do something really cool. That's all I got. Thank you very much.